probably the hardest thing was calling home um, my mum in England and having to explain to her that her granddaughter had cancer. She couldn't pop around, she couldn't give us a cuddle. Ina was four, she had a lot of pain and that's why we took her to hospital. And then it was yeah three days later on the Monday morning that she finally had an ultrasound. The radiographer, uh, she's like, oh, there's just something here. I'm just gonna get a colleague just to come and have a look and we didn't suspect anything at all. And that's when we found out that she had um, a tumor of some sort. And yeah, that's when we got her diagnosis that she had cancer. So when Ina was diagnosed, I was 10 weeks pregnant. We were referred to the geneticist to go, is there a chance that this little baby inside me had cancer? It came back um, fairly quickly, actually, that there was an incredibly small chance. Like we're talking half a percent of a chance, so incredibly small. Uh, once we knew that, we pretty much put it out of our minds and we thought, oh, this isn't an issue at all. This is not gonna happen. So the very last day of Ina's chemotherapy, we were all ready to do end of chemo dance with the nurses. We kind of took the opportunity then, um, that was the earliest that we could get our second child Elsie tested. And I walked down there, danced down there thinking we're walking out of the hospital with Ina, this is going to be great. I'd gone to the scan by myself down the opposite end of the hospital. The, the guy doing the scan basically paused and said I need to get a second opinion on something. And I think once you've been through some ultrasounds and you understand how it all goes together, you know. And I didn't cry. I just went, we've got this. It's okay. So Ina was in there having her treatment. We checked her out. We kept our room and we reported back to the hospital at seven o'clock the next morning, same room. Five days, six days in, um, this person rocked up and um, it was Ronnie. And she was just playing with Play-Doh with Ina and she had syringes out and she was pushing Play-Doh through syringes. So when we prepared for radiation, Ronnie basically took us out to the hospital and Ina was still recovering from her surgery. Um, but she set aside some time with the machinery, with the team out there and said, this is how it's gonna happen. This is what the machine looks like. Ronnie was able to get Ina to lie still. Without a child life therapist through that process, it wouldn't have been able to happen. A child life therapist is easily as important as your oncology doctor, your surgeon, and the nurse who administers the chemotherapy. 